we're doing another throwback recipe. And this one, just to remind you if you haven't seen any of the other ones, is from the 1996 Season's Best uh, Spring and Summer Recipe Book from Cambridge Chef. And I'm making the Appleberry Salsa with Cinnamon Chips. So, the cinnamon chips, I've, you can see I've been making some. I've got a little pile of them over here for, already for me. Um, so you just take some flour tortillas, put them on your baking stone, and then, I've got a full counter here, it's hard to find stuff. Take uh, your uh, pastry brush, basting, basting brush, whatever you like to call it, and some water, and you're just gonna brush water right over the top of all your tortillas. Now, of course, you can do it with bigger tortillas or you can use these little tiny ones, doesn't matter. And then you're gonna use cinnamon sugar. This is my old shaker. You get the new one. It'll be all beautiful and stainless steel. But doing a throwback recipe, might as well use my throwback powdered sugar shaker, right? So I've got my powdered sugar, or sorry, <laughs> my cinnamon sugar sprinkled on top. And then I'm gonna use my pizza cutter and I'm gonna cut them into six because they're little. If I was doing, um, you know, bigger tortillas, I might do eights or even, you know, more pieces depending on the size of the tortillas. I'm just gonna go ahead, throw them in the oven at 475 for about five minutes or so. Beware sugar scorches <laughs> so um, that's why the fan's blowing in here <laughs> because I reminded myself of that lesson so remember sugar scorches so watch them it only takes about five maybe six or seven minutes depending on your oven and these will be done the beauty of this uh, this stone is that even if the sugar burns on there it's not gonna stick because these are all non-stick so uh, I will come back in just a second and we'll make the salsa to go with these delicious chips all right, all the chips are done. So we've got a nice platter full of chips and now we need to make the salsa. So the salsa is really quite good. My daughter was sharing with me that she remembers making it and needing to make enough for everyone else, but she and her cousin ate it all. So <laughs> that is a testimonial. So I'm gonna start with our citrus zester and juicer. I'm gonna use the zester part first, because remember, if you're gonna zest a fruit, you always wanna do that before you do um, the juicing. You want to have it, you know, be nice and firm, easy to work with. So I'm going to use, oops, let's start. Let's there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the zester and I'll hold it here with a little thumb grip and then I'm just going to zest away. This is the sharpest and best zester that I've probably ever worked with. In fact, the other day I needed to sh um, grate ginger finally and I used it even for my ginger it was really nice and everything just drops down below into the little bowl so you don't have to worry about losing your zest any place on the counter <laughs> and then let's see almost done you can see my orange is not very orange anymore there we go that's plenty of zest for my purposes I'm gonna go ahead and just get a little bit of extra zest off and I have a nice pile of zest. That's probably a little zesty, but ha. Huh. I'm gonna put this over here in the sink and then it's gonna go in the dishwasher for later. I'm gonna cut the orange in half and then get the, the juice out. Let's see, that's too small. I'm gonna use my utility knife real quick. Just the perfect size for this job. There we go. And it does have a little catcher spot mesh kind of looking spot that catches any seeds. This is a navel orange, so there are no seeds, but when I'm doing the lemons around here, we have very seedy lemons. So there we go, I'm gonna get all the orange juice in there. Don't wanna waste any of it. That'll keep my uh, uh, Granny Smith apples in a minute from turning all brown. Those brown apples will make the salsa a lot less fun harder sell for my kids there we go so I've got all the pulp left here and if I had seeds there would be seeds in there and I'm gonna put that there we go, dripping into my sink and the neat thing is is that if I'm looking for measurements I actually have the measurements on the side so 
I'm gonna set that aside for the moment. And then I'm gonna fast forward through peeling here. I'm gonna peel some peewees and I'm gonna peel some Granny Smith apples. So here we go. And did you know that the fuzz is actually edible on a kiwi? I learned that a couple years ago with my little boys. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't like the texture of it, but it's edible. So if there's a smidgen left, it's not going to hurt anyone. So I'm going to cut these just in half, just so they're not quite so slithery. And I'm going to use my food chopper. And in, um, instead of using the, the bottom, the, uh, the lid or the cap on it, I'm just going to use this straight on the... are chopped. I'm going to go ahead and dump this into the bowl, my classic batter bowl. Fruit number one, I guess fruit number two because we started with the orange, is ready to go. Then we have apples. Strawberry time. All right, now brown sugar and a little bit of jam. Now they called for a 
apple jam, but I couldn't find apple jam or apple, I'm sorry, apple jelly when I went to the grocery store. So I went ahead and I just grabbed, there we go. We'll put in a couple of tablespoons of packed brown sugar. I'm gonna go with half as much because I think this will be sweet enough without uh, quite so much brown sugar because they actually called for if I was doubling it, which I am. Uh, a quarter cup, but I think that this is plenty sweet the way it is. And they called for apple, apple jelly, but the grocery store I went to didn't have apple jelly. So I'm just gonna take a little splop of apricot and that'll be delicious and it won't be a problem. Let's see, it calls for two tablespoons and I doubled it. So I'll put two big splops in and then I'll use my big scraper here to do the mixing. There we go. And then I'll have something good for my chips. Look at all that awesome chopped fruit that I chopped in just a couple minutes time. There we go. Make sure I got all that orange zest mixed through there. And within a few minutes of sitting, it will, um, you know, so it'll it'll start macerating just like your strawberries do if you're gonna make jam. You know, anytime that you've got cut fruit sitting with a little bit of sugar, it will start to release its juices and it'll be a lot more juicy, kind of like a regular uh, like tomato salsa would be, but of course fruity. So there we go. Ooh, it's so good looking. I can't wait to have some of this. Now I happen to have a lovely little serving bowl. So this is from our entertaining section. We have these lovely little serving bowls that fit right in the middle of the large round entertaining platter. So then you can go ahead and you can have something delicious just like this.